Hey everyone, this is round two of the Black Fang Dungeon scenario, the final scenario in the Perils of the Lost Coast adventure from the Pathfinder Adventure card game, Rise of the Rune Lords box. This has been a surprisingly difficult scenario so far. I thought it was just going to be sort of a normal scenario, but because we found the villain over here at the temple, seemed okay. Didn't beat the villain, so we got three cards taken out of our timer deck, and now the villain could be anywhere in any of the locations because Ol' Harsk here wasn't able to close, wasn't able to secure the throne room. So the black, black fang, black fang, could be in any location deck. We're no better off. We're seven turns down. Uh, and we still have to explore all of the locations. So our best hope at this point is that Black Fang makes himself known again, and maybe we can we we can sort of have an another uh, you know a, a do over. Okay, so it is Harsk's turn. So we'll tick over a timer deck, and then he will explore. Be the villain. Be the villain. Not the villain. Ah, oh, not the ghost again. This is that ghost who keeps popping up. Uh, Harsk, there's no way for Harsk to beat this ghost, because Harsk doesn't have magic weapons. He's one card down because he discarded one. No, he recharged one to give Kira an extra d4 in her combat. So, I guess he's going to have to go up against this ghost again with just a glaive, which is really not that great for fighting ghosts. I don't know if you've ever tried to fight a ghost with a non-magical weapon. Doesn't usually really go that well. But he's got a d6 for his melee for his strength die. He has no melee bonus, so he is just rolling um, a d6 and a d10. Unless I can, I just looked at his cards. I didn't see anything. Oh yeah, I'm glad I looked. He's got some sort of magical armor or something. Or really comfortable armor, I don't know. And so he gets a 1, a bonus of 1 against his attack. So he has to roll a, a an yeah, 11, I think. Yeah, an 11. What if, what if I did the unthinkable? And if you fail a combat check, you may discard this card. No, I can't. I think... I don't know. We'll, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. And we may be coming to it, because he just got a 2. That's... Uh, he, if he rolls a 10 on this d10, or, or a 9, I guess. No, he rolled a 4. Okay. So, that's 7 versus 12. It's 5 points of damage. That's not good. He does have an amulet. That could absorb three of that damage for him. He also has his armor, of course. Uh, he could just absorb all of that damage by getting rid of this armor forever. That doesn't seem all that great. Uh, if you are the only character in the location... Yeah, okay. So... Yeah, it's funny. This armor is actually not great for armor. It's great for a bonus to attack, but it doesn't actually do anything for armor. Yeah, I think he's going to discard the Amulet of Life. Now, there's a special condition on this Amulet of Life. If he can do a Arcane or Divine, he can recharge the card instead. Okay, never mind. That's not applicable. So he's discarding this to absorb three of that damage. So now he's down to two damage. He has to discard two cards out of his hand. I guess he'll get rid of his armor and his gla uh, and his ally, because his ally isn't doing any good. It d isn't doing anything for him right now. The ghost is undefeated. Even if it had been defeated, it doesn't matter. It would have counted as undefeated because of the, the because of Harsk not having a magical attack. So he does get to draw back up to five. One, two, three, four, five. So, I mean, this is the end of his turn, so he can't do anything with these cards, but I, I always like to look. Oh, that's brilliant. Okay. Dagger plus one. 
glaive, blessing of Saren Ray, blessing, blessing, blessing. All right. So the dagger plus one is going to be awfully useful for killing the ghost because it's it's magical. It's a plus. It's magically plus one. End of his turn, he gets to look at the top of the deck. It's just a normal old warlord with a danger thing of nine. How did I get my glaive back? Oh, I didn't get rid of my glaive. Um, okay, so that's that's good. I, I feel okay about a nine against a warlord, so that'll be nice. Would have rather, I guess, it had been the villain, but it isn't the villain. Potion of Ruggedness. Intelligence to acquire. I think her intelligence is a d6. She rolls a 6. She actually gets the Potion of Ruggedness. You can banish this card and choose a character at your location to survive to, to succeed at a survival check. You know who needs a auto success on survival? Harsk. No, he doesn't. What am I talking about? He needs auto success on charisma and diplomacy. Yeah. Harsk can do auto success on survival all day. Like he's fine. Um Okay, so there are choices. We, there are options here. So if I were to end her turn now, of course, she has too many cards in her deck. Not going to do that then. So I will discard a blessing. And explore again. It's a battle axe. Uh, strength melee 8. So that is a d6 plus 2 for her. And it's a 1, so a total of 3. So she does not acquire the Battle Axe. It's okay. I guess. Once again, it would have been nicer if that had been, like, the villain or something. But I guess I'll just keep saying that until I encounter the villain. Because it would always be nice to have the villain uh, out into the open. Actually, that's not necessarily true. I mean, it would be nice to close locations so that the villain couldn't get away. Okay. So. All he's got is Blessings and a magical dagger and a glaive. He's turning over his villain, not his villain, his monster. The difficulty to defeat the warlord is increased by the adventure deck number. There's no adventure deck number to this one. Subtract one from each die rolled in your check to defeat. From each die. Wow. Okay, so he's a nine. Um, so the glaive is a d10. Harsk's uh, melee is a d6. So that's it. That's that's what we have available to us. Um, unless we wanted to expend something to defeat this guy. Uh, well, actually, what's our dagger do for us anyway? I mean, there there is that plus one. Oh, it's just a d4 plus one. Oh, but on dexterity instead. So dexterity is a d8 with a natural plus three. So that's a plus three for his dexterity. It's a d8 for his die. A d4 for the dagger. And then another one for his... Oh, I just tried to cheat. Uh, another one for it being a plus one dagger. That's a d4 and a d8, and we're going to minus one from each of those rolls. And he needs to get a five. Yeah, I think I'll take my chances. One. Never mind, he doesn't have a d4. Okay, so he needs to roll a six on this d8. Six or better. He rolled a seven. So seven minus one is six, plus four is ten. This was a nine to defeat. Defeated. That is, that's pretty nice. That dagger is pretty nice, actually. I mean, it's not, you know, amazing, but it, it is, that is nice. Okay. So that was Harsk's turn. It's the end of his turn. So he could either spend a blessing to continue to search... And he does have three blessings in hand right now. Yeah, let's do that, actually. Oh, darn, I was hoping it would be the ghost. 
Uh, if defeated, you may immediately explore again. If undefeated, 1d4 combat damage. Okay, so this is a wisdom perception or a dex acrobatics. Wisdom is a d6, percep per per perception is a plus 2. So we, if we do that, then he only needs a 5 on a d8. No, on a d6. Only a 5 on a d6. He could do a blessing. Yeah, I think he's going to spend a blessing to add another d6 to his roll. So now he's looking for a 5 on 2d6. Got a 2. Not out of the woods yet. And a 5. Okay. So he is de he has defeated the barrier. So he does get to immediately explore again for free. It's a wooden shield. So he needs to do a constitution fortitude check. That's pretty good for him. That's a, a d12 plus, what is it, 3? No, plus 2. So he only needs a 2, or better, on the d12. He rolled a 12, of course he did. Uh, so he gets the shield. Yeah, so he'll he'll draw up to 5, so that's 1. So he's got another weapon. He's just not doing ranged today, I guess. Well, I mean, he is, because this, this, this dagger is actually ranged. So I guess that's his, that's his ranged option. It's not a bad option. It's just that the crossbow, I don't know, adds a little bit more, his light crossbow. I did, I think I got rid of one of his crossbows, though, to keep, maybe, I think it was this dagger, actually. Okay, so that's good. That's, that's the end of his turn. So before I can switch over, he can scry. That's exciting. That's quite exciting. Um, so he, he's, we now know where the villain is. This, this is the villain. And the villain can't escape, necessarily, to this location. If we defeat the, lo so, so what we're going to do, hopefully, is close this location. That's the temple. It's an automatic close. So there, this is closed temporarily. It's not it's not closed forever, but um, but she has this on lockdown right now. She's she's been able to secure this location, which means that the villain cannot go to the temple. Now understand, we have not. You know, I I, I guess I shouldn't close this yet because it's not. <laughs> he hasn't encountered the villain. We he's he's peeked around the corner. He has identified that the villain is there. So when the time comes, we'll close that location. As long as he defeats this villain in combat, the villain can only run then to two other locations. And that's what we want. We want to narrow down the location of this villain. So we do have a blessing that we could potentially use. We have the dagger, which is just kind of a joke. Uh, we got the quarter staff. We got the glaive. Yeah. So whatever he ends up using, he's going to want to use a blessing of Saren Ray to help him to to add another. And I think that won't be the dagger then. Although that is his ranged, like that dagger. It says plus one, but we have to think of it as a plus four. It's actually a plus four because he if he uses range, he's got that plus three bonus. But then the blessing only adds another d4, and that seems really crippling when you're up against a 12 monster. And if we roll, if we, if we, if we did the glaive, yeah, that's what we have to do, honestly. We have to do the glaive so that the blessing would then add another glaive, another um, d10. Yeah, I think that's that's our only option. Unless we did, what what if we did this? When playing another weapon, you may discard this card to add one d four 
plus one to that combat check. Oh. Wow, okay. Yeah. I think I I think I think we have a plan. Okay. So I think in significantly No, no. So okay, so yeah. So that was his scrying. He scried. Uh this is a blessing a, a timer deck that we're switching. Ooh. Oh, that won't matter. Okay. Um that's the blessing deck. It's Kira's turn. She's gonna explore and arcane armor. It's not even worth acquiring this because she doesn't have the arcane skill. She has to banish that card anyway. Doesn't matter. So I don't know. That's that's a card that we looked at. Five. Okay. Do we have anything to help Harsk at all? Uh, discard this card to choose a character at your location. No, not useful. Dog slicer, half plate, blessing of Lamash too. Of course, would be helpful, but it's not. Banish this card and choose a character at your location. Okay. So no, there's nothing that she can do. Let's see her her skill though. Her skill is instead of oh, your first exploration, you may reveal a card with a divine trait and choose a character at your location. Okay, no. So that that wouldn't actually do anything either. Okay, that's fine. So um this is Harsk's, I mean, this is it. Well, it's not it, but it's it's a confrontation. And so we'll flip over a Blessings card. We'll encounter the villain. Okay. Immediately, wait, why is this, why did I put her deck down over the location? Um... So immediately, she is able to, to secure the temple. So there are two open locations now. Black Fang, Black Fang is a 12 creature. So I believe if he uses, if Harsk uses a Blessing of Saren Ray to add one die to a check, then if he uses the Glaive, he can use 2d10. To roll plus his strength or melee die which is a d6 and then apparently apparently when playing another weapon that's that's the glaive that's what he's doing you can discard this card to add a d4 plus one to your combat check so that would be a d4 plus one to combat as long as I discard this card. I really hate to do that because remember there's a ghost in here giving Harsk a real run for his money. Um, however, we already know where the villain is, so who cares where the ghost who cares about the ghost now? This this is the this is the important thing. So that gives um, Harsk quite a different outlook on getting a 12 uh, no sorry getting 11 on all these die i feel relatively good about that so i'm just going to roll them all and see what happens that looks pretty good uh it's eight and eight so that's a 16 17 so black fang has been run off he is he i mean in card terms he has been defeated in game terms he's just been run off so what that means is that we get to add two bless uh well we we look at the open locations and that's two so we add two minus one blessings and then we do a a thing and then i'm gonna just i guess i just have to hold the cards behind my back and not look where you know, which one is which okay and then we add one card to one location and one card to another location I'll shuffle those in a minute. We now know that the villain is in one of those two locations. So we honestly don't really care about these locations anymore, except that we have to care about them. Because if we explore either of those two decks and we encounter the villain again, the villain will just run to another location. So we do have to care about these locations. We just, we don't have to... We we just we can if we encounter a henchman now 
we'll know that it's safe to close these things. So we just we we know where the villain is is the significant thing. It's the end of Harsk's turn. He is going to scry. It's an item. That's good. And then he is going to draw up two cards. He needs healing. Bad. He's got one card in his discard pile. So he absolutely needs healing. Um, and Kira is the person f to make that happen. I feel like I'm probably forgetting a global rule. When any character encounters an ancient skeleton henchman... No, I'm not. Okay. I don't think we've... I don't think we've encountered a henchman yet. Maybe... No, I don't think so. Oh, yeah, we did. No, we didn't. One, two, three, four. We did not. Okay. Okay, so that was Harsk's turn. So next turn is Kira's. And even though we haven't closed a location or anything... I mean, she temporarily closed the location. So I'll stop it here and continue with the rest of the scenario in the next session. Thank you very much for watching.